Hey, what's up guys? This is part two of the Photoshop to After Effects 3D logo and text tutorial. Uh, in case you did not see the first part, uh, we're starting to use this logo that we extruded from Photoshop and we're going to motion track the footage and kind of put it all together and have a 3D logo inside of After Effects. So, just so you're wondering, oh, sorry, let me bring this over and resize this. Okay, so let's just start from here. I uh, haven't, haven't tried to composite this in yet, but it shouldn't be too hard. So let's just get into it. Uh, first thing I noticed, and we, and we touched on this on the last tutorial, is bringing your, your extruded text into After Effects from Photoshop is extremely processor heavy. It's slow, but there's a couple workarounds, things that we'll do to speed it up. And so when you bring in a, a 3D composition from Photoshop, it automatically defaults your logo or text into draft mode because it knows it's going to take a while. So before we get started, let's just make this our final draft here, our best quality. And you can see right now, I already clicked the button, but we're kind of, there we go. Now we're thinking about it. And we can see how slow this is. So normally what I would do, since I know this is a 2D track and we're not panning around or anything, I would just make a still image of this, but I'm, I'm showing you guys a way that if you wanted to spin this extruded text, if you wanted to uh, go around it, there, it's, a, it's a little limited, but it is a 3D object inside of here, as slow as it is. So actually, you know what, before I bring that to our best quality, let's move this to quarter res, and I'll show you how you can actually move around this object inside of After Effects with the camera. Getting a phone call from my dad. What's up? All right, so I just got done updating to a quarter res. I'm going to take the camera tool and let's see if it'll let us do this in real time here. Nope, not going to happen. But you can see I'm moving around in 3D space. The, you can turn this object and, it, you know, again, it, it's limited. We're bringing it from Photoshop, no big deal, but definitely gives some options and it's more. The options inside of Photoshop Expose, Exposazi, is uh, better than the whole duplicating technique that, uh, you know, duplicating your layers, putting in Z space to get extruded text. So, all right, so now that we know that this is an actual 3D object inside here, let's go back to full quality here and then also our best quality and not draft. And I will let this. Update, I'll probably fast forward this as well. Uh, it's a little process processor intensive as usual, but we'll get through this together. All right, so there we go. It updated to the best quality. We have our shadows hitting our YouTube logo. And it is a little funky down here. We, we could always fix that and take more time. We're finding this kind of stuff, but we get the basic idea. So now let's get to the fun part, making this all look good and bring it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn off our logo. We need to track our scene. So I'm going to right click our footage and let's go to track motion. We need the rotation and position. And let's just find a couple points that will work here. Whoops. Mm, that looks good. Make our search area a little bit smaller. There's not too much motion blur or anything shaking around. And let's move our other one. Let's try this guy right here. And let's go up. Make a new null object to grab our tracking data. And let's analyze forward. And everything looks pretty good. Everything looks really good. Let's edit the target and make sure it's going to our tracking data. Push OK and then apply. X and Y, sounds good. All right, 
So let's just grab all that, close it up. And our null object looks great, staying in the scene. Now let's turn our logo back on and start start to work here. So normally, like I said before, I would just make a still image of this. I wouldn't work with this composition because it's a 2D track. I'm not planning on this rotating or moving around or anything like that. I just want it static in the scene. So it really doesn't need to be in this composition. All we need is a, a single frame that we can drag over the composition. So basically what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing. I'm just going to freeze frame this time, freeze frame. And then that way it should be able to render and update faster. All right, so we got that good to go. Let's parent it to our tracking data. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit. Scale it just a, just a little bit. All right, there we go. Our YouTube logo is in the scene. Looking good. So now let's just do a couple of easy things to bring it in there a little bit more. I'm going to turn this layer off. All right, so I don't really have anything planned for this. Just kind of playing around. I might add a little bit of a shadow down here. Um, so we could either duplicate this text move it back a little bit or we could just create a shadow so you know let's just do the typical uh, duplicate in our text bring it down I made it a 3d layer just so I could drop it down like this maybe rotate the Z a little bit and see this is what this is one of the problems that happens trying to use this technique with objects that are sort of already at a cockeyed angle. You kind of get weird uh, little distortions like this that wouldn't technically fit like this. But since we're going to make it dark, blur it, it's not going to matter too much. We'll be able to get away with it. Um, we're kind of just looking at these shadows and I want to match that. So let's go up to effect. Fill. And let's just make sure we know that this is our shadow, which is also still tracked to the null. And I'm going to just kind of click this area for now and get, get close to kind of matching the colors that are out there. Maybe I'll grab this one. That's good. That's good for now. I'm going to unlock the scale, make it a little bit longer since all our shadows are long at this time of the afternoon here. Right, so looks good. Is that a fast player? And go back and make this a little darker again. Push T for the opacity. Play with that a little bit. I'm just kind of playing this to kind of see how I think it matches there. Maybe I'll still go a little towards the gray side. Let's blur it a little bit more. And I might set the transfer mode to something like darken. Yeah, okay. So that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> Start with uh, just some random color correction stuff. Um, this is our plate. And it's kind of... There's a lot of contrast to it. It's a little crushed. So when I do my overall color correction, I kind of want everything to be flat and uh, color correct easily and the same. So I'm going to kind of just make this a little bit more flat. So I'm just lightening the darks and you know dimming down the brights a little bit. And I'm going to try to do the same thing for our YouTube logo here. Let's just kind of bring our blacks up just a little just a hair. Now everything looks a little milky and washed out, but that'll work out for when we start adding adjustment layers on top. So I'm doing Command Option Y for a new adjustment layer. And let's just kind of, this is really the part that anyone can kind of do whatever they want. Actually, you know what, let's add a good old, good old lens flare. Why not? It's bright out. Lens flares, so I'm going to use optical flares for this. Andrew Kramer's optical flares. If you don't know about it, um, you definitely should. What am I talking about? If you're watching this, you know about it. So I'm going to go to, let's just go to light, 
Let's go with Real Sun, sounds great to me. And then I'm going to, I could do some expressions to link all this to our tracking data. But since it doesn't move a lot, I'm just going to scale our layer up. I'll pair that to our tracking data. I'm going to set the transfer mode to screen. And I'm going to set the position of our sun kind of out here. I don't really want to see the circle. I just want the effects of the glow on there. So I'm going to turn up the brightness a little bit, maybe the scale a little bit. Bring off here to the side. If I'm going to take the center point, I'm going to move it back over so at least we have this cool little, little hit down here on top kind of you know, kind of mashing the scene together. Uh, let's fast blur this as well. Don't want that so apparent. So already, I mean, it's really kind of coming together, looking good. Um, this is our color correction layer. Let's just call it CC. Let's just start adding a bunch of effects. And this is all to taste. You can kind of do whatever you want. Let's add some curves. Got to add curves, right? Bring the contrast up and down a little bit like that. Levels. And maybe this I'll start playing with the colors a little bit. You know, change the reds a little bit. Let's add a little bit of green. Maybe not too much. A little bit of, a little bit of blue. And again, this is however you guys want. Use this to taste. So Already right there. Doing pretty good. So I'm just going to do Shift F8 to do a little before and after A and B to see see how this looks. Yeah, it's not bad at all. YouTube logo. Uh, it's just one of the one of the effects I like to use when I'm adding you know fake elements inside of footage is a filter called Reduce uh, Interlace Flicker. And so I can add a little bit of that, and all it does is soften it up just, just a little bit without blurring it. And it's real subtle, you might not even notice, but definitely, definitely a nice effect. Um, I also like, that, like to add a little bit of edge blur from Key Crack. And I'm talking a real small amount with this as well. And it, it might not even work with this either. Yeah, let's do 0.1. And it's just, you know. Real small amounts. Also, let's make sure that motion blur is on for all these guys. And you know, I'm actually I'm actually not liking that edge blur for right now. And this is kind of kind of the end of the tutorial. You guys can make this however you want. Uh, we have our we have our nice shadow kind of bringing this in, in here a little bit. Maybe we could bring up the opacity a little bit more now. Um, last things I would probably add is maybe another levels just to see what kind of looks with bringing this, bringing this back in. Because remember we use the curves to kind of wash out our blacks and, our, and all our contrast so we can can bring it back a little bit, play with our mids. Yeah, that thing looks great. Go back to our lens flare, make that a little brighter. And let's make sure it's off to the side. And one of the last things I like to do is add some grain and stuff like this. And we have our preview render or preview region right there. Um, basically, the default I always do is Kodak. I bring the intensity down. I start at 0.5 on both the size or size and intensity. Just see what it looks like. Let's do the final output for this. And then I I personally like to make it monochrome monochromatic black and white noise. And there we go. I think that is another. Another tutorial done. Hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Get a hold of me on YouTube or uh, I answer questions a lot quicker on Facebook. And hope, hopefully someone can use this. And again, you know, same sort of steps for 
your extruded text or your logo and it's a good workaround if you happen to not have a 3D program available. So I hope this helps you guys and I will talk to you guys next time.